Hi, I'm attorney John Cannon with Cannon Associates, and today I'm going to be speaking to the issue of protecting your base access. Base access, I'm speaking to military installations and bases. Whether it's in Oklahoma or beyond, military commanders have the authority to determine who they allow or don't allow onto their installation, even more powers than, say, a mayor or a governor may have for purposes of safety of the installation itself, security clearance issues, as well as protecting the individuals on that base. So, First and foremost, what is a barman? Barman is when a base commander determines that an individual, whether a military member, a military spouse, a federal employee, or some other person is barred or banned from being on a military installation. Now, if you're a service member, that can cause you serious problems with your command, serious problems with reporting for duty. However, this today we're speaking principally to the issue of military contractors, federal employees, and other individuals that work on military bases in a civilian capacity. If you work on a military installation and something allegedly takes place that causes a military commander to want to ban you or bar you from a military installation, that is a barman action. And when a barman action takes place, there's an initial finding that you are prohibited from the base. You do have a due process right. However, as soon as that initial barman action is entered, you are not allowed onto the military base. And that moves on to the next point, notice and response. If you are barred from a military installation where you work or have access for another reason, you will not be allowed to go onto that base. Simple. However, you do have the opportunity for notice and the opportunity to respond to that. And it's vital to your career, vital to your position or access to that base that you take advantage of those due process rights. Next point is urgency. You typically will be given a letter from the base installation commander or their office, their attorney's office or administrative office, stating that you are here barred from entering into this installation, whether you're barred from Tinker Air Force Base, barred from Fort Sill, barred from Vance Air Force Base, barred from the munitions plant in McAllister, or any of the many smaller installations across the state of Oklahoma. As soon as that barman action is signed, you cannot get on base. You are prohibited from accessing that location because it's not a public road. It's not available to public access. It is a military installation and that commander has the authority to stop people from coming out of that base. And the point of urgency is that you have a very limited window that you can effectively respond to this issue and request to be allowed onto that installation. And it's important that you take action quickly, that you contact an attorney or personally draft a response and submit it to the office asking for the barment to be lifted or temporarily suspended until determination could be made related to the allegations or claims against you. So next, know your audience. The party that you are writing to is not simply an employer. It is not the head of HR. It is not the owner of a company. It is not a CEO. It is a lieutenant colonel, a full colonel, or a general officer that has decades of experience in the military, that cares first and foremost about the safety of their installation, the safety of their personnel, and the safety or the protection of military secrets, military inventory, and military access. That audience is someone that is principally concerned with what impact, if any, your presence will have on good order and discipline, the safety of the installation, and the safety of members on that installation. So, you need to focus on diminishing the threat. Your focus is not on you being a great employee or that you brought cookies to the office the other day or you've never had a write-up in your, your role. The installation commander does not care how good of an employee you are. I repeat, in barman actions, the employer does, pardon me, in embarment actions, the base commander does not care that you are a good or bad employee. It doesn't enter their mind. The only thing they're considering is whether you are a threat to the installation a threat to personnel in the installation, or a threat to the commander. Because if a commander allows you back onto that installation and there's a subsequent event, or if the allegations turn into fact that something happened, or additional problem with you, and they've granted an exception or removed the barman and allowed you back on base, they may be concerned that falls on them. So it's important that you diminish the threat. And how you do that is, one, hiring a fierce advocate with military experience, such as JAG attorneys, myself, my associate, who have years of experience working with military. But if you're going to draft the response yourself, it's important that you take urgency 
and you respond. You have the right to write a response, and guess what? Unlike some offices, military commanders or their designee will read every single word you write. If they receive a memo, one, they may critique how it's written for the proper military formatting of your letter, but they will read every single word. So it's important that you don't focus on the wrong things. You need to focus on the concerns of your audience. And again, the concerns of your audience is that you diminish or remove the threat that you pose to that installation, you pose to those installation uh, members. And again, make reasonable requests. You can, you can fall on your sword. You can state that there is misconduct that took place, but you need to be reasonable what you're asking for. You can ask for a period of probation. You can ask for exceptions only to be allowed to return on the base to go and leave from your place of employment. It is ill-advised for you to write a letter to a full bird colonel or a general officer, someone with a star on their shoulder, and say, you need to let me on back, back on base because these are bogus allegations and I need to get to work. That will not fall on the ears of your audience well. Keep in mind you are writing to a military commander with decades of experience dealing with civilian employees, contractors, lower enlisted, uh, non-commissioned officers, and commissioned officers from the bottom tier to the very top. So they've dealt with lots of personnel issues. They've dealt with evaluating risk, doing risk assessments on it on a daily, if not a weekly or monthly basis. So know that you need to be addressing your risk and how you can diminish it. And again, make sure that you act with urgency. You do have the right to respond. You do have a short window to do so. You need to diminish the threat that you pose to that installation in your response to a barman action. Here at Cannon Associates, we're fierce advocates for military members and those with employment on military installations. We've had successful results for multiple clients seeking removal or suspension of barman actions on military installations in Oklahoma, specifically Tinker Air Force Base here in Oklahoma City or the Midwest City area. If you are facing a barman action, have a loved one that is, or just have questions about these issues, please feel free to leave a comment at the bottom of this video. You can reach out to us through a secure message on Facebook or through our website, or you can call the office. Our website is jpcannonlawfirm.com, and you can reach us by phone at 405-657-2323.